Hazel cat, hazel cat, rescue cat who knows where it's at. Use a chair for her bed, pair of symbols by her head. Look out, here comes the hazel cat. In the interest of fair disclosure and all that, this is another repurposed Rocket Robin Hood episode. Our main man, Mr. Bakshi, seems to have been unusually proud of that show, and after watching a few episodes of it, for the life of me, I cannot figure out why. Oh, isn't it exciting, Peter? Like unwrapping Christmas presents. Yeah, Jackie. Thanks for letting me help you unwrap this stuff. This is the first time in years that anyone's been up here. When my family decided to buy this old house, I could hardly wait to explore it. Peter seems to have given up on blonde, blue-eyed Susan, so now he's going for green-eyed, red-head Jackie. Poor brown-haired, brown-eyed Betty Brant was never seen or heard from again. There were rumors that she was so heartbroken she joined the Foreign Legion. This house used to belong to Professor Smithers, didn't it? Whatever happened to the old bird, anyway? I don't know. No one does. She disappeared 30 years ago, and the house has been empty since. So long before either of you was born. He was an eccentric inventor who never let anybody see what he was doing up here. He was an inventor, and from what I heard, his head was really in a strange place. He never talked about his experiments or allowed anyone up here. I wonder if... Peter, look at this. What is it? I don't know. Whatever it is, if it's pulsating like that, I'd look at it from a comfortable distance. Peter, wow, you won't believe this. It, it looks like some sort of magnet. It's not. This book, Professor Smithers' Diary, it's a time machine. That explains why he never let anybody up here. He didn't have time for it. Oh, come on, you're putting me on. Let me see that book. Hey, you're right. But you're just a girl. How did that happen? This is my last entry. I have set the machine to 3 million B.C. The door will remain open for any who wish to follow. Why? Why 3 million B.C.? There were no humans around. Our ancestors had reached the Australopithecus phase and had only recently learned to walk upright, geologically speaking. They wouldn't have any idea what to make of him, even if they did see him. They won't because our ancestors at that time lived in Africa, not New York. I have already brought back a specimen from the past. It is extremely dangerous. A seed with an incredible rate of growth. It feeds on any sort of energy and under no circumstances should it be exposed to sunlight. Whoopsie doodle! How fast does this thing grow? It's just bopping along like that, smashing houses, uprooting trees, absorbing energy from everything and growing bigger by the moment. Now what? Got to go back in time and find Smithers. Ask him what to do. But... No time to argue. The machine is set for the past. That thing must have some sort of natural enemy back in time. I'll go back. You get out of here. Hurry, notify the police. Peter steps into the machine and materializes in 3 million B.C. Yes, I know it's more properly called BCE now, but this is 1968. We hadn't learned about the letter E yet. Peter quickly changes to Spider-Man and sets about trying to find the professor. That's Stone City. Professor Smithers might be there. If he went in there, I doubt there's anything left of him. A giant stone city like that three million years ago could only have been built by Cthulhu. <laughs> Got to stop that thing. Got to get through, or New York's had it. There were frogs in the Miocene epoch, and they were about the same size as the frogs we see today. I couldn't tell you what that thing is. He's going to encounter a couple more weird creatures like that, and I don't get it. In that time period, the most dangerous animal he might run into is a saber-toothed cat or a good-sized bear. Instead, he meets that thing, a giant bug of some kind, 
with so many options for real critters he could deal with, I don't see any logic to inventing fictional ones that don't fit anything anywhere in the evolutionary timeline. Let's go. <laughs> Head. Well, at least I'm being taken to the city. Oh, I'd prefer to walk. Those things, for example. Don't ask me what they are because I've never seen a single scientific paper about Miocene era blue monkeys. Who are you? I warn you, if you come from the Forbidden City, you. I'm from the 20th century. You must be Professor Smithers. I need help. That seed of yours. Release him. He's a friend. He's also the leader of the Blue Monkeys. The seed, eh? I was afraid of that. Then maybe taking it back to the 20th century was a bad idea? Next time, put the notes about it on the box, not in your journal. He says there's only one way to stop it. The only way to stop the vine thing is to feed it pure radium. And the only radium I know of is in the eyes of the great idol in the Forbidden City. Forbidden City? When I first came here, 30 years ago, I gathered together all the men I could find. He calls those things men, and they understand what he says. Even supposing they actually ever existed, he likely would have been in big trouble as quick as he appeared, because he sure ain't one of them. But to them, he might look good to eat. We built the city. On rock and roll which wasn't easy since there were no radio stations for him to listen to on his transistor. And using the radium gems, which were very abundant in those days, we held off the vines. Radium gives off great amounts of energy. That energy is called radiation, and it's deadly. Ask the radium girls of the early 20th century about the energy it gives off. But prepare yourself for some gruesome images and stories. I guess the blue monkeys are immune to it, and the professor has been around them long enough that he is too now. Anytime we found a fine thing, we fed it the radium gems. The energy was too powerful for the vines to take. They burnt up, all but two. Soon there were only two gems left. We put them in the eyes of the great idol we built. Why did he have them build an idol? And if you're going to introduce religion and an idol to them, you missed a perfect opportunity to make it look like you and get your little slice of immortality. Anyway, with just those two gems left, the plants rose up and kicked him and the blue monkeys out of the city. It's theirs now, including the idol. Spider-Man will have to invade the city and get the gems. So then these guys will have nothing and the plants win? Now, they feed from the radium gems, but slowly, so that the energy does not harm them. I've got no choice. If you can get the gems, we will be forever in your debt. We want to go back to our city. And if you take their radium, the mutated vine things will wither away. In modern terms, they're addicted to the radiation. Making them go off at cold turkey will destroy them. <laughs> There are reports that a bad creature has invaded the Forbidden City. What? what? The animals are getting brave. And what is being done to stop this vermin? That's right, three million year old plants speak English. You didn't know that? We have prepared a trap in the temple of the idol. Excellent! Well, that is the only place it would be going to. I shall look forward to its capture. The plan is to let the thingy get into the city and then grab it while it's going for the idol. Now to... Sort of like that. He manages to fight them all off, but they have other ways to nab him. Why didn't he shoot another web and break his fall? 
Well, see, that's part of his master plan. He lets them knock him unconscious, and then when he wakes up, he's in a better position to take them down and grab the gems. As plans go, I've heard worse. I can't remember when, but there must have been something. Every so often, we cut away to New York and watch the plant smash the same house and the same two trees at least three times, which is the sort of thing we've come to expect from this season. Men, they have entered the Forbidden City. You shall pay for your animal insolence. Animals such as you are fit only for the sport of beings of the vine. How dare you challenge our vegetable superiority? Have you taken a good look at him? You may be able to surmise that he's not from around here and might not know the rules yet. Ah, just looking at your filthy protein body disgusts me. Let the animals fight! Again, a saber-toothed cat would have been just as formidable a foe and it would have been believable. It won't take Spidey long to wrap this thing up in some webs and render it immobile without hurting it. Now that that little distraction is out of the way, he can get on with his mission. They're all in the arena. Now's my chance. As he swings over them carrying the gems, we see the plants shrivel and wilt until there's almost no trace of them remaining. Now back to the time machine. And here's something that's been bugging me throughout the whole thing. Peter keeps fretting about what's happening back in New York and will he be too late to save the city and so on and so on. And doesn't he realize this is a time travel machine? That means he can set it to put him back at the same instant that he left. For that matter, it might cause a time paradox, but he could probably have it send him back to before the plant hatched and he could stick the radium gems in the box with the seed and that takes care of that. But when Peter does return to the 20th century, the same amount of time has elapsed as when he was back in the past. This is our teenage scientific genius. Never mind, let's just take care of this thing. I've got the gems. The city is yours. Why you want to stay here is beyond me, but have fun with it. Yum, yum! Uh-oh. And that takes care of that. It's easy when you know how. Finding out how is the hard part. Then I left out of the time machine, and there was Spider-Man. I gave the gems to him, and he saved the city. Oh, Peter, you saved the city, not Spider-Man. He only helped you. You're a hero. Well, I won't argue with you. Is Peter finally going to kiss a girl? Jackie reports that the radium did something to the time machine. It stopped working and nobody knows how to repair it because that plant ate the professor's diary. They can probably get a few bucks for it as scrap metal. Ah, oh, too bad. Now we can never go back and find out how Professor Smithers made out. Maybe we can. Huh? What do you mean? Why don't you come over tonight and help me explore the basement? The basement? If I'm Peter, I say, how about we go see a movie instead? I think it's safer. And it increases his chances of at last getting that kiss. 